We're at the Founding Museum to commemorate the work of William Hogarth, one of Britain's best loved artists. Hogarth played an important role in the building's history. This was originally London's first home for abandoned children, as well as the city's first public art gallery. This year marks the 250th anniversary of the artist's death. To celebrate his enduring appeal, the museum is exhibiting the works of four contemporary artists. Each is responding to his masterpiece, A Rake's Progress, from the 1730s. Hogarth tells the story of Tom Rakewell, a naive country boy who suddenly inherits a fortune. He has dreams of becoming the perfect upper-class gentleman and heads to London. But he spends his wealth on gambling and brothels before losing everything. After a stint in the debtor's prison, he descends into madness and ends up in Bedlam, London's infamous mental asylum. In those days, it was a bit like a human zoo. Notice the women in the background. They're on a tour of the place, having a giggle at the inmates. As a voyeur of Tom's decline, you suddenly feel a bit like those women. We're both attracted to and repelled by Tom's story. Hogarth exposes the corruptions of his day, and at the same time forces us to question ourselves. The four contemporary artists on show reveal their tributes to the series. There are tapestries by Grayson Perry, etchings by David Hockney, photographs by Yinka Shonibare, and a new commission by Jesse Brennan, made especially for the show. I was particularly intrigued by Shanibari's photographs, in which he casts himself as a Victorian dandy. I spoke to curator Stephanie Chapman to find out more. I think there's a number of points of comparison between Shonibare's work and Hogarth, a number of things that he was inspired by. Mm. I think, first of all, he chooses as a central character, a character which is essentially an outsider. Um, so he chooses the figure of a dandy. Mm. Um, Hogarth had his rake, um, who never really um, made it into the upper classes once he'd inherited his fortune. And in the same way, the dandy, although he is surrounded by sort of people that are admiring of him and sort of almost fawning all over him, he still remains a little bit apart from them. I think the dandy figure is always slightly an outsider in society. Perry's tapestries bring this room to life and show a real affection for Hogarth's series. He updates it by focusing on class and consumerism in the 21st century. Perry follows the journey of Tim Rakewell from birth to death. He's born into a working class family, but rejects his roots when he becomes a millionaire businessman. This is my favourite tapestry, it's brilliant. So here you have Tim and he's surrounding himself with middle class status symbols. Right bang in the centre, you have the cafetiere. You've got these organic vegetables strewn around the table. The Kath Kidston bag. He's bourgeois and proud, as the pillow says next to him. Tim is buying into this middle class lifestyle that Perry is clearly critiquing. Tim reaches the heights of upper-class glory in his old age, but by embracing a mega-rich lifestyle, he's made enemies. These protesters have banners with rich is bad, tax is good, pay up Tim. Tim is likened to a stag being devoured by dogs. There's something universal about the human frailties expressed in Hogarth's story as well as in those by Shonibari and Perry. These characters fall for the glossy surface of high society, a world of seemingly endless pleasure. Sound familiar? But wanting more has never seemed so unappealing.